Hi, my name is Courtney, and I'm with GoodMorningGirls.org, and this week we're up to Luke chapter 11, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 4, where the disciples talk to Jesus, and they say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. You see, since they had to say, teach us, that means that we need to learn. And for some of us that got saved later in life, you may have gone to a community group or a Bible study, and they might have said, we're going to go around the room and pray, and you might have thought, oh, I don't know how to pray. How do we do this? What do you guys do? I mean, in some churches, they memorize prayers, and they say like liturgical prayers. But the prayer that we're going to see here that Jesus gives us, it's an intimate prayer. Because he starts out by saying, when you pray, say, Father. Father. Father is a close, intimate thing. I have an earthly father that I love so much, and he loves me. And there's a close, I can ask my earthly father anything. I can ask him any questions about what or how something works. I can ask him for help. I can ask him for things. And in love, he always gives me or helps me with what I need, unless what I ask for is not good for me. So when I was a kid, if I would have asked for Oreos and Mountain Dew and to stay up till midnight every night, he would have said no because that's not good for me. Um, but in that intimate relationship, though, we can at least ask. Kids ask for things, right, sometimes that maybe aren't best for them. But just like my earthly father says no, God sometimes tells us no because he knows what is better. But there's that intimacy there with our father, and it says, Hallowed be your name. The way that our earthly fathers are different from our heavenly fathers is that our heavenly father is hallowed. He is holy. He is sinless. He is up here and it humbles us to realize we are just sinners and that we are not God and we are not all powerful and that he is. And that's what makes him trustworthy. Because some of us may have had earthly fathers that were not kind, that were not loving, who maybe one day you asked for something and they said yes, and then the next day they're in a bad mood and they say no. But that's not the God of the Father that we pray to. Because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is holy and perfect, and His love for you is perfect. And so that is the Father that we pray for. And even more, it says, Your kingdom come. This Father that we pray for is the King of kings. He is majestic. He is powerful. He is sovereign over everything in this world. That is awesome that we have access to this God. And may we never neglect this access that we have, but to daily go to him and pray. Because it says in verse 3, Jesus says to say, give us each day our daily bread. Give us each day our daily bread. Day and daily we see there that what Jesus is saying is come to me every day and tell me your needs. He wants us to wake up in the morning and bring our needs before his throne. He wants us to come to him at the end of the day and, and any time throughout the day when we need him. He's there. He is there for us. And he wants us to bring our needs, not our greeds, but our needs to him. And then in verse 4 it says, Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. The Lord's Prayer is written also in Matthew 6, and, and it's a little bit longer, more extensive than here in Luke. And it uses the word debts. And I think we're pretty familiar with uh, the word debt because of financial debt. And if you have a credit card at the end of every month, you get a statement that says all the places that you spent money and you need to pay your debt. Well, imagine if at the end of the month we got all of our sins listed on a statement and those were our spiritual debts. Imagine if we could see that, you know, hey, at 2 o'clock yesterday you lost your temper with your kids and then at 3 o'clock you gossiped with your friends and at 8 o'clock at night you lost your patience with your kids when you were putting them in bed and you had a full statement, imagine, of all of your spiritual debts. Well, Jesus has canceled that debt. He has forgiven us of all of our sins. And Jesus says, when you pray, I want you to remember, I have forgiven you of all your sins. And I want you to forgive others the same way I have forgiven you. And then in verse 4, it says, and lead us not into temptation. We are to pray and ask God, knowing that, you know what, today I might be tempted to lose my patience with my kids. God, help me today. Help me to not fall into temptation. You see, there are two fathers. We have our heavenly father, but there's also in the Bible talks about the father of lies, Satan. And he wants to lead us into temptation and sin. And, but if we will remember to let our Heavenly Father lead us, hold on to our, our, his hand, then when that Father of lies whispers in our ears, we will not fall into temptation. 
When I was a kid, we went to SeaWorld a lot, uh, and it was just a place my family, we loved to go. And when there were big crowds and we couldn't see where to go, I could hold my father's hand, and I knew I was safe. I knew that I didn't need to see a map to know how to get to the next show we were going to see. I didn't need to see over everyone's heads, the crowds. I just needed to hold onto his hand, and I would arrive safely where I needed to be. And in the same way, we need to let our Father lead us, our Heavenly Father, knowing that when He leads us, we will arrive to where we want to be safely. We can trust our Heavenly Father. Lord, teach us to pray. We need to pray in the way that Jesus has shown us every day. We need to teach our children how to pray. We need to disciple other women and show other people in church through Bible studies and, and places where we connect in community groups how to pray. Keep walking with the King.